Okay, so we can have a, a chat about different forms of energy. So we talked about lifting the bottle up half a metre, gave us three and a half joules of extra energy. And then when I dropped it onto the desk before, it, it made a loud noise. So what I want to ask the question about is what happens to the energy when the bottle falls? So if I let the bottle go, up here it's got a certain amount of potential energy. If I let it go and it starts to fall, and as it goes down, it's now got less potential energy than it had at the top. So where's that energy gone? Is the, is the key question. So we're asking the idea of changing energy from one form to another. Is the, is the big idea. Changing energy from one form to another. So the question is, what other sorts of energy are there that you could change it to? So when I drop the bottle, it's got more energy here than it does here. What's happened to the energy that it swapped, changes from here to here? Kinetic energy, okay. So what do you mean by kinetic energy, Matthew? Come again? Motion. Okay, so the energy of, of motion. Okay. Yep, so the fact that something is moving means it's got energy. So when I start the bottle off, it's stationary. When I let it go and it starts to fall, it's got speed. And that speed represents some energy. And we have a formula for that as well. Energy is kinetic is one half mv squared. Again, it's going to be in joules. And that formula is on your formula sheet as well. So you can figure out, if you know how much energy something's got, you can figure out how fast it's going. And if you know how fast it's going, you can figure out how much energy it's got. Okay, so the bottle at the top has got potential energy. And as I drop it, it falls down and it's got kinetic energy that starts to move as it goes down. And then when it hits the ground, it makes a noise. So we get things like sound, heat. Where does the energy come from in the first place? Okay, so it's down there now. If I put it up here, where did that potential energy come from? Okay, so where did the energy for me to do that work come from? No, no, it's got potential energy now. So I did work on it, but that energy's got to come from somewhere. Chemical energy, okay? So in the, whatever it was I had for breakfast this morning, porridge or whatever it was, there was chemicals, and those chemicals had certain bonds and things in them, and that's gone in for me, and I've broken those bonds in my body and released energy, which I've stored in my muscles, and then I've been able to use it. So it's a form of chemical energy. Okay, and you're used to things like, you know, what makes the lights go, um, it's electrical. There's a whole bunch of different types of energy that we can change from one form to another. Okay, and there's what's called the principle of the conservation of energy. It says that energy is neither created or destroyed, it's just changed from one form to another. Okay. Um, and then there's another concept which, you guys are mechanical students, aren't you? Awesome, okay. So you're gonna come across this other really, really, really interesting concept called entropy, which is um, a really good idea. Let me tell you another another true story. Um, you know my dad was a little bit crazy. Um, <coughs> so when I was seven or eight, I guess, I got a Christmas present, and my sister got one as well. Um, it was called an entropy coin. It would give every eight-year-old, isn't it? So it came in a little box, and it had a 50-cent piece in it, which back when I was eight was actually, you could buy a lot for 50 cents. So it's a, we're going back a long way, back to the you know, early 70s. <laughs> yeah, no, we had TV. Didn't have colour TV, though. Days of black and white TV. Yep. Um, so <coughs> you got a 50-cent coin, and it uh, had a set of instructions with it, and the instructions said, um, <coughs> you can spend this money at any shop you like to and then come back to, to me, to my dad and I'll fully reimburse you and you can keep on going. But the only rules are whatever money you have has got to be kept in this box 
<coughs> when you go to the shop, you've got to come back and tell me how much you spent, and I'll give you that amount of money back in the biggest denominations smaller than what you spent. Okay, so back in the day, it was 50 cent pieces, 20 cents, 10 cents, fives, twos, and ones. We had a one cent. We had a one cent coin in New Zealand back in the day. Okay, so you started off with one 50 cent piece. So I started off with one of these. Okay, and I spent the first hour thinking about how I could maximise it. My sister went off down to the down to the shop and bought an ice cream and came back and said, oh, I spent 27 cents or whatever. And that's so she had to keep her 23 cent change in the box. And then she said to Dad, I spent 27 cents. So she got given 27 cents. So she had kept her change from 23 cents. So she had a 20, a 2, and a 1. And then she got given 27 cents by Dad, which was another 20, a 5, and a 2. So that's what she had in her, her box after one exchange. I thought about it carefully and thought, the way to do this is to go and spend my whole 50 cents. So I went and spent my whole 50 cents, which means that once I'd spent my 50 cents, I was then given two 20s and a 10. So those are the smallest coins that I could use to, to make up what was, what was going on. The next time you went to the shop, you only had to spend one coin at a time. So next time I spent one of my 20s, so I then had the other 20, and now I have three 10 cent pieces. And the next time I spent that 20 again, so now I have two 10s and the other three 10s. You get the picture? Yeah? So I always have 50 cents, but the coins get to be worth, I get smaller and smaller coins. And the other rule I forgot to tell you was you're not allowed to spend the copper coins, ones and twos, you can't spend, they got to stay in the box. And you get to give those back next Christmas and get a new one. This only happens once a year magically at Christmas, it all recombines. Okay. But the idea is, see, what my sister had straight away made a bit of a mess of it, because this five cents she could never spend again. So straight away she she'd limited what she, could, what she could spend, whereas I was going to get the maximum go out of everything. In the end, we were both going to end up with a pile of one and two cent coins, but I got to spend more in the, in the interim and bigger, bigger chunks. So energy does the same. Okay, so energy, you start off with a decent chunk of energy, and then when it converts into things like sound and heat, you can't really get it back. I mean, when I dropped that bottle of water, the sound went out and the bottle would have warmed up slightly, but there's no way we can get that energy and sort of stick it all back together into something useful to lift the bottle up again. It's being all sort of spread out into useless stuff. Same as when the coin gets spread out into a little ones and two cent coins that you're not allowed to sort of bring back together to use again. So you spend a lot of effort getting energy into nice, big, usable chunks. And then as it spreads out, this is the idea of entropy, it becomes more and more disorder effectively. And you can't get the same use of it because it's been been all spread out. Okay, so this is the idea that energy is conserved, but the usefulness of it is not always the same when it's in different forms. And that's the idea one of the key ideas behind entropy, which we'll come across in great detail when you read papers on thermodynamics and stuff like that with Ravinder and Dave over the next couple of years. Things to look forward to. Okay.